Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Gabon's president pleads on video for help after soldiers depose him hours after widely criticised election results return him as leader. The junta chiefs say that Ali Bongo has been arrested for the betrayal of state institutions and massive embezzlement. His family has run the country for over 55 years. And... To mark the International Day of the Disappeared, the African Union and Red Cross consider ways to reduce the sometimes fatal risks faced by African migrants, thousands of whom disappear without a trace on the way, as they're particularly vulnerable to unlawful detention, arrest or abduction. But first, Gabon's president is under house arrest and the soldiers who have deposed him have named the head of the Republican Guard as the country's chief. In the latest coup to hit a former French colony, soldiers detained President Ali Bongo just hours after he was declared winner of a highly suspect election set to extend his family's 55-year rule. At 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., curfew's been brought in and General Bryce Oligi Ngema designated president of a transitional committee. Delana D'Souza tells us more. Crowds gather on the streets of Gabon's capital in celebration. The scenes of joy breaking out hours after the army announced election results from this past weekend's vote were null and void. The president, who earlier was declared the winner securing a third term, released a video from house arrest. And to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world, to tell them to make noise, to make noise. For the people here have arrested me. I'm in the residence and nothing happening, nothing is happening. Away from the presidential palace, the coup leader was celebrated by fellow soldiers. Wednesday began with an announcement from members of the army who said they had decided to defend peace by putting an end to the Bongo regime. As the day progressed, junta leaders came out with a second statement and named people including the president's son who had been arrested and detailed their crimes. High treason against national institutions. The mass siphoning of public funds organized financial wrongdoings on an international scale, forgery and the use of forged documents. During the course of the day, scores of people, including women, continued to take to the streets, expressing gratitude to the army. Yes, I'm happy for change. The army liberated the country. Today we are free. Thank you to the army. Thank you to the army. The Bongo family has been in control of Gabon for over half a century, with Ali Bongo in charge for the past 14 years. Saturday's election lacked international observers and saw internet services suspended, raising concerns over the transparency of the vote. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by Dr. Ramaji Hunati, an analyst specializing in Central Africa from the Institute of Security Studies. Doctor, thanks so much for speaking to us. Now, we heard there in that report that there have long been concerns about the Bongos dynasty in Gabon. But what were the triggers here, do you think, behind this particular takeover? What, what tipped the scales around this election? Uh, first, let's say that uh, when examining you know, uh, the argument that have been put forward till now uh, by the military who have taken power in Gabon, uh, the current elections have been kind of the last straw that finally uh, brought the camels back. Uh, in other words, in addition to these elections and the obvious risk of social uh, and political tensions that they entail, the Bongo family's governance over Gabon for more than uh, four decades is here, here being profoundly called into question. Uh, indeed, under Bongo's father, uh, Bongo the father, the economy, uh, economic upturn in Gabon mask in a way the shortcomings of a system uh, that have been considered by some uh, to be authoritarian and clientelistic. Uh, but under Ali Bongo, the economic slump due in part uh, to the fall in oil prices ended up fueling political tensions. Uh, moreover, uh, Ali Bongo's health after his stroke in 2018 uh, seems to have diminished him not only physically uh, but also politically. And coming back to the last elections, the whole process, uh, as we have been observing, was fraught with controversy, uh, notably first over the single ballot voting system uh, and the restrictions on the press 
observers and communications that have been imposed on the polling day, uh, rising in a way tensions uh, to new heights. So uh, clearly also rising the spectrum uh, of the post-election crisis that occurred in 2016. But can you really say that this takeover is about democracy or, or is it more likely to be a, about a struggle amongst the elite? It doesn't look like the military is really focusing on trying to hand power to, let's say, the opposition candidate if they were unhappy with the election result. In fact, they've, they've named General Ngema as a transitional on tr as a transitional leader. So what do you think is really behind this, uh, the aims of the, uh, the soldiers who've um, performed the coup? Uh, I think uh, up to now, we should uh, uh, stick to the words that actually have been pronounced by the junta. Uh, and uh, taking them, the junta, at its word, uh, while awaiting uh, till now the announcement of a more precise and detailed uh, roadmap for this transition, uh, the military by announcing the uh, cancelment of the elections result and the suspensions of the institutions seem to be then uh, moving towards a kind of classic transition, as we have been seeing in some countries uh, now. Uh, but the contours of which uh, will certainly take shape in the days ahead. Uh, but uh, again, getting back to this, uh, the, the argument is about uh, restoring the institutions, uh, so regarding institutions and restoring them. So uh, we hope that uh, what will be announced uh, will be a transition with the possibility uh, getting back as soon as possible uh, to constitutional order. And what about Ngema himself? What can you tell us about him and, and his relationship with Ali Bongo? Uh, General Brice Oli, uh, Oli Ngema is not new uh, in the security apparatus in Gabon because he's himself the son of uh, a general uh, that already served under uh, Omar Bongo. And uh, he had been trained in Morocco and started serving under uh, Omar Bongo and then Ali at the presidency. But at the beginning of Ali's um, reign, he had been uh, sent abroad for missions. Uh, and then uh, from 2019, he joined again uh, the Republican Guard, where he very quickly uh, rose through the ranks uh, uh, to become its chief. Uh, meaning that, uh, uh, in other words, he is actually the head of the elite unit of the Gabon uh, security services, and then uh, most likely uh, the best places uh, in terms of being able to seize power uh, as fast as this happened uh, in Gabon. But do you think that in Gabon there's truly much belief, much faith, that the same army that fired on protesters um, in post-electoral um, uh, disturbances in 2016 are now committed to putting the ordinary Gabonese person first? Uh, this, all, uh, this also, I think, it's uh, some early to, to say it, but if we refer to the way uh, the streets are jubilating, uh, there is at least a sense of a popular uh, trust in uh, the fact that the junta might be able bringing in change. But this can also be read as the fact that people are very eager, you know, uh, having change happening in a place where uh, through the years, even elections have not been able to uh, bring in alternation at the head of the, uh, the state. Uh, but what we should also read through what's actually happening in, um, in Gabon, uh, and I think that the junta should actually uh, be able reading through uh, what's happening, is that uh, the last events show a real need of a country like uh, Gabon to rethink uh, his governance system. Uh, because what's happening actually, as I said, is questioning uh, what have been the real offer of the Bongo family uh, to Gabonese through the years uh, in Imagine. terms of economic governance, in terms, yes, uh, in ter terms of economic governance. So I really think that they will be able, reading through the events and being able, uh, proposing to Gabonese a way of really rethinking uh, the institutions and the governance of the country. Thank you so much. Uh, Ramaji Hunati there, the researcher from the uh, International, uh, International Security Institute for Security Studies there, speaking to me from Chad. Now, amidst the wave of international condemnation of the takeover in Gabon, there has been acknowledgement of legitimate concerns with the polls that preceded it. Unlike Niger and other West African countries currently run by military juntas, Gabon is not battling jihadist insurgencies. It had been seen as relatively stable, but the fractures that led to Bongo's ousting were more social than 
around security. Frustration of the hold that his family's dynasties had over the country is deep. Bongo's served two terms since coming to power after the death of his father in 2009, who himself ran the country for 41 years. Soldiers have called Bongo's governance unpredictable and irresponsible, and several members of his family are also in the firing line. Coup leaders were quick to target some of the elite closest to him during the takeover. Have a look. Les personnes. The following individuals have been arrested, particularly for high treason against the state institutions. They are Nourdin Bongo Valentin, Yann Gislen Ngulu, Jesse Ella Ekoga. They are some within President Ali Bongo Odimba's inner circle facing serious accusations. Among the charges, treason, embezzlement, forgery, drug trafficking and active corruption. Firstly, Noureddin Bongo Valentin, the eldest son and so-called heir of the Bongo dynasty. From 2019 to 2021, he worked as general coordinator for presidential affairs before being dismissed from the post in September 2021. In March 2022, he was appointed strategic advisor to Ali Bongo within the Gabonese Democratic Party one year before the presidential elections. At the time, the opposition denounced the planned dynastic succession at the top of state. Next, Yann Gisla Ngoulou, considered to be Nouridine's right-hand man. From 2019 to 2021, he worked in presidential affairs under Bongo Valentin. Since then, he's been appointed as Ali Bongo's chief of staff. And finally, Jesse Ella Ekoga is the son of former Army Chief of Staff Jean-Claude Ella Ekoga and former Communications Director of Sylvia Bongo Odimba's foundation. In November 2019, he was appointed presidential advisor and then spokesman following the arrest of his predecessor. They were all arrested in the wake of the August 29th coup. According to the Putschists, an investigation has been opened against them. Quick look now at other news. Wednesday is the International Day for the Disappeared. And migrants are particularly vulnerable to kidnap, abduction and secret imprisonment. So much so that the problem was at the heart of discussions at the African Union on Wednesday. That's where our Clotilde Azar was. Here she has what to say. Over the past 10 years, 40,000 people have died while migrating on the African continent, and these are conservative estimates. Uh, today, uh, the conversation were held at the African Union headquarters to acknowledge uh, those lost lives and weigh solution to this neglected and hidden humanitarian tragedy. One of the goals was to build on the 2021 AU resolution that recommends special measures to better track uh, the fates of migrants and refugees risking the dangerous journeys uh, to Europe or Gulf countries. There must be systems uh, to enable uh, migrants as they are moving along, uh, that they are well documented, they are well registered, uh, and that they have a means of communication uh, to their families, uh, that uh, detention of migrants is not the first uh, recourse uh, by authorities uh, that uh, those that are seeking uh, asylum or those that are seeking international protection because they are moving that they are able to do that within the possibility of uh, being able to remain in communication. Above all, the African Union uh, encourages the state members to prevent irregular uh, migration and to tackle and to deal uh, with the root causes of it, like uh, conflict, and employment and environmental issues. One of the solutions mentioned by Ethiopia today is the need to improve official migration options with specific bilateral agreements with destination countries. All participants in today's exchanges about migration emergency stressed the global aspect of the crisis and saw the importance of a global response. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us. Take care.